Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer and I am here today to present to you an abstract that I co-wrote with my supervising professor, Dr. Carolyn McGregor. And the title of our abstract is called Advancing Human Health Monitoring in Spaceflight with Integrated Countermeasures and Big Data Handlers. Uh, our contact information is listed on this page. Should you have any inquiries about uh, details of our research presented in this presentation, feel free to reach out. This slide will also be repeated once again at the end of this presentation. So what we'll be covering today is we will be covering a background and the motivation behind our research. I will be discussing a little bit about the physiology um, due to spaceflight and the countermeasures that are conducted to combat any physio uh, the, the uh, adaptation of uh, physiological changes due to microgravity. Uh, I will introduce vital signs data, such as heart rate variability data that is currently being used to monitor astronaut health today. Then I will be presenting a, an extended framework that is instantiated in a, an online health analytics platform uh, called Artemis that is proposed for space medicine decision support. And then we will move on to discuss future work to conclude this presentation. So being launched at 28,000 kilometers per hour, uh, space travel for astronauts is a huge uh, endeavor. Now, homeostasis is the dynamic uh, process that the, that the physiology of our bodies go through to help us maintain equilibrium and function. And uh, in the various stages of spaceflight, the body goes through, can go through a range of conditions from motion sickness, um, musculoskeletal system deconditioning uh, because their joints, they're used to bearing weight on, uh, in the gravitational, in, in gravity uh, is no longer bearing weight. Their heart uh, is pumping blood to the extremes of their body where their blood vessels are not necessarily used to. Um, so that uh, implicates a stress tension on their body, as well as certain uh, fluid shifts in their body, such as uh, extracerebral spinal fluid uh, that uh, goes into their brain and it pushes on the optic nerve of their skull, thereby impacting their vision. Um, so even when they come back to Earth, they have a certain, uh, they have to adapt back uh, to, to, uh, to their uh, condition upon returning back to Earth. So these changes all come at, at, as an adaption cost. It depletes their functional reserves, it increases their tension of their working ability of their body, and it ultimately just deteriorates their health and their performance and their physiological well being, especially in the long term upon them coming back to Earth. So that physiological adaptation is combated currently on the International Space Station for these missions who go for six plus months at a time. And they conduct countermeasures, countermeasure activities um, on the space station. So uh, here you see the treadmill. Uh, they have a treadmill on the space station. They've got the cycle ergometer vibration isolation and stabilization uh, device, the CBIS, where they can um, bike with their legs or they can uh, bike with their arms. And then they've also got the advanced resistive exercise device, uh, the air red, to simulate, uh, to simulate uh, weightlifting exercises to help them maintain bone density. There's also a handful of um, existing devices 
that also um, that is also capable of collecting uh, vital signs information from the astronauts themselves while they're being used in space. Uh, and all of this is to help ensure that their um, their physiological health are are at a at a equilibrium in the uh, in their adaption to space. So in prior health informatics research, uh, heart rate variability information is a vital sign parameter that has been utilized to uh, distinguish what the effects of space flight and uh, other isolation experiments conducted on Earth has been on astronauts and astronauts in training. So what this does is, is, it, is that it utilizes a functional health state algorithm uh, developed by the Institute of Biomedical Sciences uh, in Moscow, Russia, and uh, it presents the information to determine the health state of the, of the patient, whether they are in a physiologically normal condition where their functional reserves are quite high and their stress degrees quite low. But as their bodies adapt, uh, the various heart rate information given uh, can show on this graph how on this graph how they are adapting, um, how well they're adapting, and what their health states are. As you can see, so this information here presents a group uh, information on um, twenty six crew members uh, of the of the. Um, Ross Cosmos. Um, this uh, diamond shape represents uh, their health states as a group before going, before being deployed uh, to the space station. And uh, this represents their uh, group data as they are in space flight for six months. Their bodies are actively, uh, this information shows that their bodies are generally adapting and moving. Um, and then upon six months after coming back, their bodies have readapted back to a, a relative physiological normal. However, uh, their stress tension, uh, their stress degrees are not quite what they were before the space flight. Uh, so with this monitoring capability, uh, with our research now at Ontario Tech University, uh, we have demonstrated an online health analytics platform uh, for real-time monitoring of premature babies in the intensive care units. The same platform um, extent can be extended to uh, remote monitoring autonomously on the space station, as well as a um, as well as providing that information and that same instantiation of the platform um, at mission control. So this cloud platform has been uh, implemented and is uh, actually acquiring data live um, from uh, sixty-eight bed spaces. Uh, in two hospitals in Ontario. Um, and this cloud platform has also demonstrated its uh, capabilities to transmit data from remote hospitals to an urban or tertiary hospital for monitoring uh, premature babies um, all over the globe. So in saying that, these um, the countermeasures uh, that are being conducted by the crew members on the International Space Station currently remain effective to an extent that is acceptable uh, for the astronauts to be rehabilitated back when they return from a mission. But there is still a gap in the in-depth knowledge on the impact of these exercises for longer duration space flight when we uh, start colonizing the moon 
um, and when we extend uh, space exploration to Mars and beyond the globe. So in an effort to bridge this gap, we propose utilizing the existing data acquisition approaches on the space station. So connecting these computers and collecting data from these computers on the space station to integrate into an autonomous health monitoring system that is online and cloud-based. So this extended framework uh, can be instantiated on the, with the Artemis platform on the International Space Station, and it consists of all of the components required for autonomously uh, uh, collecting that data, transmitting it, and processing it through analytics, and then presenting that information back to the astronauts, um, as well as storing that information locally. This framework also includes the instantiation of the platform at mission control, so whenever communication is possible, uh, all the protocols and data can be relayed back to mission control. Now this is the proposed extended framework as a whole. Um, part of this framework includes the relevant technologies to ensure seamless processing of the various uh, data. So this includes physiological data, um, uh, training data, countermeasure data, as well as any other manual manually collected data, um, such as activity data, for example. Um, it can also, it, it's also capable of streaming uh, environment uh, data as well uh, from the different sensors of an integrated environmental control system. So, uh, so one of the um, subcomponents of the framework is the adaptive API uh, that is created for real-time streaming analytics where uh, streams of data is processed and uh, is processed by uh, certain um, certain algorithms uh, to standardize that data and thereby uh, creating subscription topics for downstream algorithms uh, to subscribe to the relevant data streams as necessary. Uh, for, for presenting information back. So um, real-time monitoring and alerting is enabled by this adaptive API, as well as countermeasure, uh, countermeasure intervention decision support, uh, should that be necessary uh, for the astronauts to conduct themselves. Um, and of course, visualization reporting and all that information gets stored into the data storage component. Um, and uh, further analytics can be um, performed on that data. And all of that can be done at mission control as well when the communication is um, provided and available. So uh, moving on now to the future work of our extended framework, uh, we have our lab at Ontario Tech has uh, been, we've, uh, we've been able to get our hands on the Astro Skin shirt that was uh, worn by David Saint Jacques, the Canadian astronaut deployed. Uh, on the space station back in 2018, we got our hands on this shirt. So we are able to uh, perform some studies uh, to help enrich our knowledge of uh, integrating the continuum of data uh, through various activities as well. Uh, um, uh, my professor has been working on um, working with the collab with collaborators to launch a private data relay satellite, um, which uh, to ultimately pro provide um, space health analytics as a service to, uh, to in support of space medicine decision support. Um, and in providing space health analytics as a service, uh, this um, 
This framework utilizes a deep space hybrid uh, radio frequency and optical networks, um, presenting an end-to-end -end data distribution infrastructure uh, from the cislunar habitat, such as the International Space Station, um, and then relaying that information back um, onto Earth um, at Mission Control. Um, and part of this research also addresses the current gaps in space communication networks as well. Um, so that work will utilize the HALO network, uh, which contains a constellation of uh, 12 Earth orbit satellites um, with a service capacity of 33 terabits per second uh, amongst 48 satellites and satellite uh, optical crosslinks. And then there are um, other uh, satellite to ground um, crosslinks as well. Uh, which I can't really go into much detail because this is beyond the scope of my work currently. Um, but uh, the ComStar uh, data relay satellite uh, will ultimately be utilized to relay uh, data from the cislunar habitat, wherever it may be, orbiting around Earth, or whether it's at the lunar surface, and that information will be relayed back to mission control on Earth. So in conclusion, uh, the integration of countermeasure data in addition to physiological data and other manual information that can be inputted into uh, this online health analytics platform can ultimately improve the health and wellness of um, astronauts and in long duration space flight. Um, and the data analytics um, generated from such a platform uh, can contribute to uh, precision medicine and, uh, and optimizing exercises, exercise protocols in space for the astronauts. Um, and such remote health monitoring technologies has terrestrial implications on Earth as well for uh, communities that are uh, quite rural and remote with limited resources, such technologies can be instantiated as well uh, for such communities for monitoring uh, health of patients uh, at hospitals, et cetera. So this concludes my presentation. Um, thank you so much for having me on this platform. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.